Alright guys, in this video I'm going to talk to you about importing and comments in FilePass. I'm going to throw a whole bunch of information at you, but it's going to be handy and super useful. Now, the first thing I just want to mention real quick is this. You know whenever you're just using CSS, then you can comment using this style right here, and you can put on multiple lines if you want. Well, with less, they also give you the single line commenting syntax. So you can actually type a comment on a single line, or if you have some ruler property, like right here, then you can put this comment after it and it's going to work fine. So again, I just want to let you know that there's also a single line comment that you can use whenever you use less. Now, aside from that, I want to talk to you a little bit about importing. So what people do and what I see a lot is this. Instead of having all of your styles in one style sheet, for example, main.less, they like to break it up into, um, you know, like a different one like buttons and maybe another one called forms. Actually, let me show you. So instead of just having every single style for my entire website in main, I'm going to add a new file called like buttons.less. And I'm going to add another file called like forms.less. So I would have all my button styling right here, all of my form styling right here, how the inputs and text fields are going to look. And what I can do is I can actually just include those using the import command. So import buttons, import forms. So what this is going to do is essentially go over to buttons, copy all the stuff in here, and plop it right in there. Then go over to forms, copy all of it, and plop it right in there. Now you guys are saying, what's the point of this if I can just include a bunch of different style sheets right here? Well, whenever you do it this way, then what you can do is on every single web page that you design, you can keep one single link. Because this link right here, whenever it looks at main, it's not just looking at the styles directly in here it's also getting all the styles from here and here and that's how you can have all of the styling from your entire website nice and neat just like that now pretty sweet and the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is this and this is actually a problem that I had with my website what we're doing is the new boston.com we're making an open source probably in the next uh, couple weeks so we had it set up where everything was running fine on the server. It still is running fine. However, whenever developers download it on their local machine, their own computers to try to work on it, the file paths were really weird and difficult to work with. So we needed to change all of the file paths in the CSS. So we, uh, well, I'll show you guys a quick example. And I download these two images off the internet. And there's this really cool site, I forgot what it's called, but uh, you can get a bunch of free images. So here's a watermelon and here's a girl, and they're in two different directories. The watermelon is just in the images directory. And say that we had um, images also in this one, I don't know, maybe we're moving all of our icons in a new directory. We'll say that that's the story that we're going with. Well, anytime you want to use image paths as variables, then what you do is this make a variable, we'll just name it whatever you want, like images, and set it equal to images and, you know, whatever file path. If there's a more complicated one, then you can do that as well. But say that we wanted to uh, also have another variable for, like, homepage images. So these would be in images directory and also homepage. So we were working with two different directories, this image directory and the homepage directory inside that for images for your homepage. And instead of having to write all of these every single time, then what we could do is something like this. So maybe we'll call it one and two. So height, 500 pixels. Margin bottom is 10 pixels. And of course, for the good part that we're actually talking about, the background, which would be the URL. And this would typically be an image URL, but in here, instead what we can do is we can actually use that file path. Now, look at what I did. Instead of just using at images, 
whenever you're working the file pass, you have to separate the at sign and put the variable name inside these curly braces. That tells less in CSS that, hey, this is actually a file and not just a generic value like a color or something. So what was in here? Watermelon dot jpeg and let me just copy this for the other one and this was home page images copy that and paste it right there so now if I just add these two divs real quick check it out so ID one and another one of ID two so hopefully this works and boom and two didn't work because this isn't watermelon it's girl alright so there you go so instead of anytime you want to move your files around then you're gonna to have to go and change the URL in every single spot what you can do is you can just stick it in a variable and manage it easily right here now for our website we had that problem so instead of um, you know having to just change a variable in one spot like oh instead of images we're gonna put them all in images um, you know like Bucky or, or whatever we had to actually go through all of the CSS and do it the hard way so there you go that's how you properly use image pass and if you want to see how it gets compiled boom there you go and I messed that up so look at that. Awesome, easy to manage. You guys are probably in love with less right now. I know I am. And uh, yeah, there you go. That's how you use importing, comments, and file pass. So congratulations. See you guys next time.